Whenever you talk about the biggest upcoming games, it seems like a recurring theme is that a lot of these games are these big massive open world games and that's exactly what I want to highlight in today's video. Specifically for the rest of 2019, I want to look at the 10 biggest open world games that are still yet to come. At this point, all of these games are scheduled for a release in 2019, but as is the case with all games, there's unforeseen circumstances. Sometimes a game might get delayed or whatever the case may be. I'll go over release dates and everything like that. But just bear in mind that they are relevant for the time of this video being recorded. Hopefully nothing gets delayed all too much, but as always, things that we don't see coming do happen in gaming. So without further ado, let's get right into this and let's get it started with a PlayStation 4 exclusive in Death Stranding. Death Stranding is a game that I honestly did not think was going to be released in 2019. However, I think it's safe to say that the game will be released this year. We've already got a release date. It's coming in early November. And of course, this is the latest game coming from Hideo Kojima and Kojima Productions. Sony has a hand in publishing this game and making this game come to reality. And it's an action game set in an open world that also includes some sort of multiplayer functions, Kojima compared the genre to how his earlier game, Metal Gear, was called an action game during its release because the stealth genre was not considered to exist at the time. He might see this game as a brand new genre being created. Now, obviously, with it being a Kojima title, expected to be incredibly ambitious. Honestly, for a little while, as we were getting more and more trailers of the game and no release date or no inkling on when we were actually going to be able to play it, I was getting a little bit annoyed. But now that we have a sizable information drop on Death Stranding, the game is relatively close, only about four months away. Actually, four months to the day as of recording this video, I am getting more more and more excited for Death Stranding. Given that it's Hideo Kojima, given that he's had ample time to work on the game and Sony is backing the project in terms of finances, I think it's going to turn out really, really well. We'll see exactly how well as Death Stranding is scheduled for a release on November 8th. Next up, we have Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Now, Ubisoft has become one of the unsung publishers of this generation. I know it's a little bit surprising that I would go bad for a publisher like Ubisoft, who is generally considered to be a bigger publisher. However, Ubisoft sometimes has that same stench that I would say an EA has, but I think Ubisoft has been relatively good this generation. You look at all of their multiplayer offerings from The Division 2, For Honor, Rainbow Six Siege, they have been more often than not very good. Of course, we have had some stinkers like The Krill, and even that game wasn't that bad, but here we're talking about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the follow-up to Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's a third-person tactical shooter in an open world, and it looks to be a sizable jump up from Ghost Recon Wildlands. The gameplay we've seen thus far, and we've seen a sizable amount of it, given that the game isn't all too far off, is looking very very good and the game is planned to launch with four different character classes and Ubisoft announced plans to make more classes available through post-launch updates and that should be reiterated over and over again because Ubisoft multiplayer games these days yes hopefully they'll release pretty well and they'll be good at launch but we've seen with games like The Division games like For Honor that a lot of these games do evolve over time and I imagine that Breakpoint is going to be very similar to that and that hopefully it releases well but I do imagine that this game is going to get better and better over time whatever the case may be Ghost Recon Breakpoint will be out on October 4th. Next up, we have Biomune. Now, Biomune is scheduled for a release in 2019, but I'm starting to get a little bit skeptical on whether or not this game will actually be released this year, just given the fact we're already in early July, and we don't have any exact release date for the game. I could see this being pushed to early 2020. Hopefully, it's out by 2019, because I think this would be a great game to get out sometime in the fall. But nonetheless, let's talk the game, given that it is scheduled for 2019. It's an action RPG set in an open world, and it's very interesting in that you take control of a raccoon-like creature in a world filled with with mutated animals. When you boot up the game, the first thing you're gonna do is customize your own character, and this includes elements such as sex, length, body shape, and thickness, fur, fangs, and many other attributes, but they're not just cosmetic attributes. These attributes are gonna have direct impact to the gameplay, and now we're talking about the gameplay. What is the gameplay? Well, the combat system combines melee attacks with long-range shooting. The player collects parts throughout the game and combines them to create various weapons, and each part is gonna have its own effect that does affect the end product. Biomune is shaping up to be a really great game. I'm just hoping that the game is released this year. And by the way, the game is being done by a new studio, a Swedish development studio in Experiment 101. But the guys over there, they've worked on open world games such as Just Cause in the past, so you know that they have a fundamental knowledge of creating open world games. This one a little bit more compelling by design. But we'll see how it turns out, and, and hopefully its release window of 2019 does end up sticking. Next up, here's a game coming from Obsidian, and that is The Outer Worlds. The Outer Worlds is a game that was announced last year, and it kind of took the gaming world by storm. It's a role-playing 
online game featuring a first person perspective and in the early stages of the game you're going to create your own character and unlock a ship that's going to be a reoccurring theme with a lot of these games but that ship is going to be acting as the game's central hub though you can't control the ship this is where you're going to get all your stuff aligned and figure out what to do obviously this game is going to see some inherent comparisons to a game like fallout and of course with a studio like obsidian working on it obsidian did of course do fallout new vegas and they're an incredibly talented studio they've done some fantastic games i point to you games like pillars of eternity pillars of eternity 2 south park the stick of truth the aforementioned fallout new vegas tyranny they've done a lot of great games and it looks like that this will be their final game on playstation as they have been acquired by microsoft but who knows hopefully an agreement is worked out in the future and some obsidian titles could still be released on playstation platforms whatever the case may be outer worlds is shaping up really nice and all of the gameplay we've seen thus far, while I wouldn't say it's a technical juggernaut, it has looked very good, and I do expect a quality RPG out of this one as it's scheduled to release on October 25th. Alright, next up, here's a game that hardly anyone is talking about, and hopefully it does pick up some steam. We have Greedfall coming from the guys over at Spiders and being published by Focus Home Interactive. Now, Spiders is actually a pretty notable studio. They haven't worked on a lot of very good RPGs, however, they have worked on some notable games. I point to you Mars Warlogs, Bound by Flame, as well as the Technomancer, and I actually thought the Technomancer was a little bit of an underrated project. While that game wasn't perfect, I did think there were things to like, such as the premise and the atmosphere of the game, but nonetheless, now we have Greedfall, and forge the destiny of a new world seeping with magic and filled with riches, lost secrets, and fantastic creatures. With diplomacy, deception, and force become part of a living, evolving world, influence its course, and shape your own story. It's got a very interesting premise, I have to say. Visually, it looks great, and this game is right around the corner. It's scheduled to be released on September 10th, so just a few days before another huge huge title drops and we'll be mentioning that in a little bit but hopefully Greedfall does build up some traction as it's a game that I think could end up surprising a lot of people and I do think a game like this if it does deliver it could be the title that really puts spiders on the map as a development studio again we'll see how it turns out as it does drop September 10th all right I just mentioned a big game is releasing just a few days after Greedfall what is that game well of course it is Borderlands 3 that's scheduled to drop just three days after Greedfall on September 13th we are finally getting the return of a mainline Borderlands game the last Borderlands Borderlands game we saw was Borderlands the pre-sequel that was all the way back in 2014 but now we have a legitimate follow-up to Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 3. The gameplay we've seen thus far Borderlands 3 has looked stunning and it's really looking to revamp Borderlands as a franchise and of course this is the first game that's being developed ground up for the next generation consoles. I'm even saying the next generation consoles hell we're almost done with this generation and this is the first time we're seeing Borderlands really make an impact. Of course we did get the handsome collection we did get Borderlands 1 remastered but this this is what we've been waiting for and it's going to share the general premise of the previous Borderlands game, the same core loop with previous games. You're going to take on missions, defeat enemies and obtain loot from fallen foes or special chests and you're going to get all of these crazy guns, all of these crazy equipment that is going to continue to improve your character. Borderlands is such an incredibly charming game and I feel like it's a game that anybody can get into and have a great time but it's also got a level of depth to it. It is just a great game whether you're looking to play it solo, whether you're looking to play it with a couple of friends, Borderlands 3 is going to be a fantastic time and it'll finally be dropping on September 13th. All right, next up we have Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey. This is coming from a new studio in Panche Digital Games and published by Private Division. Now it was noted that this game is also being worked on by the same person that worked on Assassin's Creed, so from that standpoint, already going to generate some interest, but as far as what this game is, that is incredibly compelling too. It's a survival game played from a third-person perspective and in the game, you control a member of an ape clan and you have to manage your health by eating, drinking, and sleeping. And the game starts in an African jungle, an open world filled with threats including predators like giant birds and poisonous plants. You can climb any tree in the jungle though the player character will break its bones if it falls down and there's a lot of these unique elements and throughout the game as you progress new areas are opened up for players to explore. When an ape is exploring new locations or being hunted by predators it'll enter a state of fear which can be overcame by finding glowing orbs of light or else it'll descend into a state of hysteria. Yes it's very interesting in premise and it tries to put you in the role of a character that we haven't been in the role of before. In past games and a lot of the upcoming games, you're in the role of this character that becomes overpowered, that becomes incredibly powerful, that is a little overpowered, that becomes incredibly strong through upgrades or whatever the case may be. In this game, you're playing as this ape clan, so from that sense, it'll be very interesting to see how this game turns out, and the release is almost here. It'll be coming August 27th. 
Next up, another game that was supposed to drop on August 27th, but unfortunately was delayed is Shenmue 3. Shenmue 3 will now be dropping on November 19th, and this is a game that has also been long awaited. Even more so than a game like Borderlands 3, Shenmue 3 is a game we've been waiting on for a very long time. Going back to the release of Shenmue 2, which is well over a decade old. You're talking 15 to 17 years, and the big thing about Shenmue is it is a story-driven game. So to just see the Shenmue story be left on a cliffhanger with Shenmue 2, that was a big bummer. But now Shenmue 3 is finally happening, and it's going to be a big improvement from past games. Of course, it's been all these years and it's looking to be a very ambitious open world title. I would highly recommend if you've never played Shenmue, go back and play the Shenmue 1 and 2 collection. Those games are available on the PlayStation 4. Get yourself up to date with the story, even though those games are a little bit dated, and then get excited for Shenmue 3. I'm really hoping for the best out of this one, as it's been a long time coming and we'll finally see how it turns out come November 19th. Next up, here's another game that I've been waiting quite a while for, given that it's already been out on PC and Xbox One. Black Desert Online finally finally makes the foray to PlayStation 4 come August 22nd. Black Desert Online, at the very least, even if you don't want to play the game, you have to acknowledge it for its brilliant visuals. From an MMO standpoint, this is one of the best-looking MMOs that you are going to come across, and it's a massive MMO as well. It's a sandbox living world MMO RPG where you'll experience fast-paced, action-packed combat, hunt monsters and huge bosses, fight with your friends in a guild to siege nodes and conquer castles, train your life skills such as fishing, trading, crafting, cooking, and much, much more. This is a game with a a lot of depth to it, and outside of the brilliant visuals, you also have to give it a lot of recognition for its customizability options, as there's so much depth to that as well. You see people creating characters with so many specific details to them, it's pretty incredible. And it'll be exciting to finally see Black Desert Online come to the PlayStation 4 as it's scheduled to release on August 22nd. And lastly, to wrap things up with another MMO, we have Caravan Stories, which is scheduled to drop sometime this month. This is a very charming MMORPG. You've got a lot of the elements that Black Desert Online has. However, from a visual standpoint, it definitely does cater towards a different audience but expect it to be its own charming, quirky, open-world MMORPG. And again, Caravan Stories will be dropping this month for free, so it is a free-to-play game. Once again, another title adding to the free-to-play library on the PlayStation 4, so that's always great to see. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, even for the rest of 2019, we have so many MMORPGs that are coming out and a lot of games to be excited for, whether it be a Dead Stranding, Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, a Black Desert Online, Greedfall might end up surprising a lot of people, Borderlands 3 is incredibly exciting. There's a lot of games to be on the look out for. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.